Welcome to All Saints Church Dunstan for our virtual carol concert. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here. So we'll start off by a reading from Luke chapter 1, verses 30 to 32. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. We hope that you enjoy what we have to offer, which will be something rather different than we normally offer here at Dunstan at Christmas. Enjoy. At Christmas be merry and thankful with all, and feast thy poor neighbours, the great with the small. Yea, all the year long to the poor let us give God's blessing to follow us while we do live. Hello, we're Shiraz, a five-piece a cappella group, and we're delighted to be singing for you today. The first piece we're going to sing is one of our favourites, it's called Mary, Did You Know? And it's written by Mark Lowry and Buddy Green.
going to sing a very, very well-known carol, Silent Tonight by Franz Gruber. December, for a child, is a marvellous month. He exists then and then only among the stars and the storms and the snow, without any hindsight or foresight. He writes, or used to write in my boyhood, long letters to a man in a red coat. Dear Santa, I want a train and sweeties and a ball for playing football, a game of draughts, an apple and an orange. It didn't matter that uh, in the event all I got was the ball, the sweets and the fruit. The joy of Christmas morning and the loaded stocking at the end of the bed was like no other joy. Life, you might think, looking back, must be a cheat and a disappointment for a child. For all the Christmas stories and carols and illustrations are laden with snow. And yet, of course, most Decembers have nothing but wind and rain and darkness. But in the world of the imagination where a child lives half his time, there is always snow in December. The whole world hung sideways with its marvellous white burden. And now for something a little different. A traditional carol, but with a subtle twist. Well, not so subtle, really, actually. The Carolers from Hell. Oh, 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 Zana in excelsis. Oh, spare us those halos and endless 
worse than I remember. That's the second lot tonight, and we're still in November. Some holly that we rose, some ivy and red rose, and from gosh, the red nose and are in excelsis. Some holly that we rose, some ivy and red nose. Behind the curtain, send the dog into the hall. He'll scare them off for certain. The first verse, no other. And what's worse, his brother is singing another totally different carol. The first verse, no other. And what's worse, his brother is singing another totally different carol. slumber song of the Madonna, the music is by Michael Head, and the words are by Alfred Noyes, who is well known for his poem, The Highwayman.
I'm going to sing another lullaby, very different, called Maria Wiegenfried by Max Reger. At home, the bells are now ringing Christmas in. We are keeping the festival in our own little way, holding our silent vigil. We have lovely Christmas weather, hardly any rain, and such bright, beautiful moonlight. It gives one quite a solemn feeling. It is the peace of thousands of years. In the afternoon, the northern lights were exceptionally beautiful. When I came out on deck at six o'clock, there was a bright, pale yellow bow in the southern sky. It remained for a long time, almost unchanged, and then began to grow much brighter as the upper margin of the bow, behind the mountain crest in the east. It smouldered for some time, and then all at once, light darted outwards along the bow. Streamers shot upwards all along it towards the zenith, and in an instant the whole sky was aflame. It flickered, it blazed, it whirled around like a whirlwind. Rays darted backwards and forwards, now red, now reddish violet, now green, yellow and dazzling white. Higher and higher it rose, and for a moment there was a splendid corona. Then it all became one whirling mass of fire up there. We never tire of gazing at it. It casts a spell over both sight and sense until it is impossible to tear oneself away. And finally, we're going to go along the little road to Bethlehem, also by Michael Head, where we hear or see a bit of Mary singing a lullaby. <laughs>
to play a short chorale prelude by the great Danish composer Diederik Buxtehude, and it's based on the Lutheran chorale in Dorsi Jubile. I'm going to sing a piece called No Small Wonder. The words are by Paul Wigmore and the music by Paul Edwards. I first came across this when I was in a choir in Cornwall and although it has a very simple melody, the chording in it makes it quite special.
the year is on the turn. We will have taken our first hesitant step towards summer. The light is about half a minute longer than it was yesterday. After the harvest feasts, ancient tribes were fast caught up in the tides of gathering darkness. They had no reason to believe that the darkness might not go on increasing. The sun might rise no more, and all the earth and sea might be bound in an endless frost of death. Their myths did point to a perpetual reoccurrence of light, a renewal out of the death of the old year. But there was no guarantee, some year, their God might decree otherwise. They couldn't tell whether the 21st or the 22nd of December was lighter. Was there a faint subtraction of shadows on the 23rd? They couldn't really be sure, but we must credit them with a far higher degree of sensitivity in these matters than ourselves. By noon on the 24th, there could be no doubt about it. Light was beginning to return to the world. The early Irish monks applied these beliefs to the lives of men. They pointed out that indeed the promised light of the world had come at Yule, the merest bud of light. A child in a poor stable in the east. This piece is called Comfort and Joy and composed by the Reverend Sam Brewster, who is the Minister at Trinity at Four in Henley-on-Thames.
Some days before Christmas, Gustave went out with a very solemn air, taking his chequebook with him, a thing he never did for fear of losing it. It was the Christmas feeling. Christmas came and, as usual, I had a large Christmas tree, lots of candles and presents for him and our daughter Gookie. I was just going to give them when Gustave drove me out of the room, saying he had something he wanted to do. A moment later, Gookie came out and said that Papa wanted a lace cover. I was surprised, but I gave it to her. Next, they both came in arm in arm and requested me to follow them. I entered a bright and festal room, but what words are there for the awful premonition, the pang of icy dread which gripped me when I saw on a table all for me that long mound of presents covered in a white cloth and smothered in roses. I snatched off the covering while Gustav stood sadly by, but his sadness soon vanished and my premonition also, for I was touched to the heart by all the lovely things he'd thought of. Without any regard for his own likes and dislikes, there was perfume which he hated and I loved. There were also two promissory notes, one to the value of forty dollars for a fine spree, and another for a solitaire to cost at least a thousand dollars. The notes were signed, Herr Gustav Mahler, New York, Christmas 1910. The whole room was soon full of pink roses. We spent that Christmas by our own choice, quite alone. And now we're going to sing another traditional song, Gaudite, which was once made popular by the Steel Ice Fan. <laughs>
today with some chestnuts roasting on the open fire, otherwise known as the Christmas song.
Almeida. By John Betjeman. The bells of waiting advent ring, the tortoise stove is lit again, and lamp oil light across the night has caught the streaks of winter rain in many a stained glass window sheen, from crimson lake to hooker's green. The holly in the windy hedge and round the manor house, the yew, will soon be stripped to deck the ledge, the altar, font, and arch, and pew, so that the villagers can say, the church looks nice, on Christmas Day. Provincial public houses blaze, and corporation tramcars clang. On lighted tenements I gaze, where paper decorations hang, and Bunting in the Red Town Hall says, Merry Christmas to you all. And London shops on Christmas Eve are strung with silver bells and flowers as hurrying clerks the city leave to pigeon-haunted classic towers. And marbled clouds go scudding by the many-steepled London sky. 
And the girls in slacks remember Dad. And oafish louts remember Mum. And sleepless children's hearts are glad. And Christmas morning bells say, come. Even to shiny ones who dwell safe in the Dorchester Hotel. And is it true? And is it true, this most tremendous tale of all, seen in a stained glass window's hue, a baby in an ox's stall, the maker of the stars and sea, become a child on earth for me? And is it true? For if it is, no loving fingers tying strings around those tissued fripperies, the sweet and silly Christmas things, bath salts and inexpensive scent and hideous tie so kindly meant. No love that in a family dwells, no caroling in frosty air, nor all the steeple-shaking bells can with this single truth compare that God was man in Palestine and lives today in bread and wine. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. The words to this song are so right for 2020. Thank you for joining us here at All Saints Church Dunstan for our virtual Christmas carol concert. We do hope that you have enjoyed what we have offered tonight. Thank you to everybody who has actually participated in this um, extravaganza. A special thanks to Adrian and Margaret Fish for putting it all together. Um, without them, we would not be here today. So thank you to them for doing this. And so may the Christ child bless you this Christmas tide. May he keep you safe and warm and well. And may, as Margaret's song said, you have a very, very happy Christmas time. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you all this day and remain with you always.